Well, greetings and salutations, uh, test takers, NASA test takers. In this case, Series 6566. This is the Series 7 Guru, a.k.a. Dean Tenney, coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with an explication request. Uh, we'll help you with any question from any vendor, just easier easier if it's a Kaplan question, uh, because I can bring up the QBank backstage and see what you're looking at. This is QID 1520989. If you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. With my uh, Guru 15 discount code at checkout, uh, I think it comes in uh, around $50 somewhere. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, Kaplan QBank, I think, is the best. The best free supplement to your paid study materials is this YouTube channel. All right, let's, uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on uh, Kaplan content like this. Uh, this is QID 1520989, explication request. If a security has an anticipated return of 8.7 and a standard deviation of 14.6, uh, I don't think you're going to encounter having to do this math. I think, uh, a lot of times, test takers on 6566 go down mathematical rabbit holes that aren't necessary. Maybe two, three math questions, this certainly isn't one of them. It is testable to have a general understanding, definition-wise, of some of these terms. So standard deviation is a statistical measure of how far variables, such as an investment return, moves above or below its average. You know, the mean. You know, I always uh, use the example as an NBA fan of a, a basketball player, right? Let's say I have two players on the bench, I'm the coach, and they both average 20 and 10. 20 points a night, 10 rebounds a night is what they average. But one guy gives me 40 points and 20 rebounds one night, nothing the next night. The other guy is pretty reliable at 20 and 10. You know, the guy with 40 and 20 one night, zero the next, has a higher deviation, higher volatility. And so primarily the test question is about that volatility. You know, the test question is for you to understand that the higher the standard deviation on the security, the higher the volatility, the higher the risk. Now, where this kind of links uh, leads to is the discussion of beta, right? Not kind of what this uh, question is about, but uh, that's kind of where, where it ends up at. Okay, so back to business here. It has a standard deviation of 14.6. You would expect the returns to have a 95 pro, uh, probability. Now, Kaplan here says, assuming a normal distribution. The person who requested this said, well, how am I supposed to know that's two standard deviations? Well, you know, it's just a given that if you're into standard deviation, if you're into the idea of variance, that you would know that that's what that means. The two standard deviations means there's a 95% probability of it being between uh, whatever those that uh, mean that average is. Right, so that's you know something you had to bring to the question, uh, rather than find out on the reveal. Right <laughs> again, I don't think the the math is the test question here, but that's what two standard deviation means. That's by definition what that means, right? You know, again, in my basketball analogy, that uh, I don't expect the player to be on either side of those you know fat tails where it gives me you know sixty points and thirty rebounds. Right, that's going to be a lot more uh, unlikely than somewhere closer to the average. Anyway, so two standard deviations by definition means 95% of the variance will be within the mean, the central value. The central value here is 14.6. Now, I have to tell you that I was doing a tutoring session for a guy on his 66, and he said, Dean, I'm not paying you $225 an hour to do math with me. I'm a serious math geek. Give me any two numbers I can solve for the third. And I know he passed. Uh, but he said, Dean G, I spent a lot of wasted time on the math and it wasn't really doing the math. It was the inputs and outputs. And I didn't really make up flashcards for that or you know, recognition of that because I knew I could reverse engineer it, which I was able to do, but it took me a lot of time. So I mentioned most of this stuff is going to be definitional. If you get math questions, it's not computating, you know, this, this math here. It's going to be current yield, total return, uh, things like that. Okay, so now that uh, I've told you that by definition, that's what that means. So now we're going to take the 14.6, which is the standard deviation, times it by two. And we need to know that that's what two standard deviations actually means. And that's what the Kaplan was hinting at, assuming he's saying, assuming a normal distribution of uh, falling between, right? So now that I have that, I take the central value here. I got 8.9 on my uh, thing here. It's 8.7. So my bad. 
But anyways, it's not 8.9. The central value here is 8.7. So we take 8.7 plus 29.2, we get 37.9. And we take 8.7 uh, minus 29.2, and we get 20 and a half. And that is indeed the answer to this question. Do I think you're going to have to do this math on your exam? I do not. Do I think you need to know that the higher the standard deviation or higher volatility of security, the higher risk? I certainly do. So that is the takeaway. I hope that was helpful. I wouldn't obsess about this. This is one I would probably, get, if I were test taker, whether it shows up as a practice test question, practice question, or in the test, I think I would guess B is sign of the universe. I move on. I would find other math that is a little simpler. By the way, the vast majority of this section on analytical methods is going to be balance sheet calculations, working capital, current ratio, uh, quick ratio, debt to total cap, much more likely than you're going to see something like this. Okay, well, remember, inch by inch, you're 65, 66 is a cinch. Uh, yard by yard, you're 65, 66 is hard. And I will see you for the next explication request.